안녕하세요. 저는 뉴성 교회 청년부에 다니고 있는 작득입니다. 오늘 함께 보실 말씀은 열왕기하 19장 14절에서 19절까지 말씀입니다. From this point on, I will continue in English. Today's passage is from 2 Kings chapter 19, verses 14 through 19. I will read. Hezekiah received the letter from the hand of the messengers and read it. And Hezekiah went up to the house of the Lord and spread it before the Lord. And Hezekiah prayed before the Lord and said, O Lord, the God of Israel, enthroned above the cherubim, you are the God, you alone, of all the kingdoms of the earth. You have made heaven and earth. Incline your ear, O Lord, and hear. Open your eyes, O Lord, and see. And hear the words of Sennacherib, which he has sent to mock the living God. Truly, O Lord, the kings of Assyria have laid waste the nations and their lands, and have cast their gods into the fire, for they were not gods, but the work of men's hands, wood and stone. Therefore they were destroyed. So now, O Lord, our God, save us, please, from his hand, that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that you, O Lord, are God alone. In the previous chapter, as the king of Assyria approaches Judah, Hezekiah tries to barter with the king and to pay him to leave his city. Hezekiah even went to the temple of God for gold and silver to give the king of Assyria, but the king didn't keep his words. In this chapter, Hezekiah does not try to solve the problem himself, but turns immediately to God. He spends his servants to the temple, and Isaiah tells them to assure Hezekiah that God has things under control and that there's no need to worry. But then Hezekiah receives another message in the form of a letter, and once again explaining how Assyria will destroy them. At the sight of this, Hezekiah once again immediately turns to God. He spreads the letters out from the letter and begins to pray to God. I found the way Hezekiah began this prayer very intriguing. O Lord, the God of Israel, enthroned above the cherubim, you are the God, you above all the kingdoms of the earth. Despite all that is going on, despite all the bleakness of the future, he doesn't immediately pose his problems to God. Instead, he declares who God is and all of his glory. Why does he do this? I know I always try to start my prayers humbly, but even in this situation, I feel like I would be hard pressed to quickly jump to my request. Thinking about these things, I was reminded of a book I'd read a couple years ago called Moving Mountains by John Eldridge. It's a book about prayer, and in the book he tells of a friend who is suffering from cancer. As he prays for his friend, he is completely distraught. His friend is in a miserable condition, and his heart is completely breaking for him. As he prays, he feels like his prayers for him are a little empty. And eventually, he comes to the reason why. He says, My gaze was fixed on his suffering, not upon the resources of the living God. Instead of focusing on his friend and the terrible situation he's in, he realizes he needs to change his perspective to God, specifically the resources of the living God. Wow, that sounds amazing. A never-ending supply of whatever we need given to us by the living God. I believe this is why Hezekiah starts his prayer this way. Instead of worrying and being consumed by the imminent threat of the Assyrian army, he shifts his gaze to God. Our faith in God plays a key part in our prayers. Sometimes we feel that we have to generate our faith, but that never really works. As much as I will myself to believe harder, it doesn't just happen. Instead, we need to shift our focus to God. As we set our eyes on him, he reveals himself to us. And as we dwell on his incomprehensible wonder, we are drawn closer to him. He generates that faith within us. Just like with Peter, when his eyes are focused on Jesus, he has faith to get out of the boat and he is able to walk on the water. But 
the second his eyes shift away, he starts to drown. In Hezekiah's prayer, he looks up to God. He says who God is, where he is, and what he has done. Lord of Israel, King of angels, creator and Lord of heaven and of earth. He sets his sight on God first and then by faith exclaims why each other nation has fallen because the living God did not reside with them. And finally, at the end of his prayer, he asks God to save him. But not to save him, to show God's glory to the world. Hezekiah is clearly not just thinking about the problems at hand. Even at the end of his prayer, his eyes are clearly fixed on God. So much so that his reason in asking God for help is not just to save himself, but it also becomes to bring God glory. As I read Hezekiah's prayer, uh, I was also reminded of Philippians 4, 6, and 7. Uh, Do not be anxious about anything, but in all things, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. I always quote this verse, but simultaneously I find it so difficult to be thankful and to not be anxious when I have some problems or stresses in my life. I have quoted this verse before I've prayed, before countless big decisions, job interviews, uh, final exams, and big moves to new places, but very rarely would I say I have felt the peace of God come over me and all those anxieties just go away. And as I reflect on each of those times, I think Hezekiah's prayer is the answer to this conundrum. By being thankful for the Lord and setting our eyes upon God, we can absolve the anxieties in our life. That isn't to say I just add a, God, you are Lord of the universe, at the beginning of my prayer and call the day? No. It is the idea that I humble myself, look up to God, and acknowledge fully who He is, what He has done with all of my spirit. Throughout the day, I pray that you and I will proclaim God's glory and grace first and focus all on God. Let us pray. Dear Lord, God, you are God of the universe, ruler of heaven and of earth. You are the designer of everything from each cell in our body to the stars and galaxies in space. God, great is your strength, great is your beauty, your majesty, and your love for us. God, I pray that you would guide us and remind us to change our posture, to set our sights to you. And as we do, help us to live out your purpose, to bring glory to you as we go through our daily lives. Lord, thank you for all that you've done for us, all that you've given for us, all that you've provided for us, God. We look to you, Lord. We love you, Lord. And in your name, amen.